What's up guys, in today's tutorial, we're gonna be creating the dashboard you see right in front of you. It's interactive, it's linked up with Google Sheets, it automatically updates if your data does, it's made in picture chart, and I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to go from absolute blank page to this butte that's bound to impress your boss, your clients, whoever you think deserves some data loving. Now, I don't know about you, but I sure feel like jumping in. Okay guys, so here we are in the picture chart dashboard. To kick things off, we're gonna scoot up here and click create new, select reports. And since we'll be designing our dashboard from scratch, let's select a blank template. Now, by default, the report format is vertical, but as you saw in the intro, our final dashboard uses a landscape layout. So to change the paper orientation to landscape, we'll simply locate this little icon here to the left of the page and swap the current values. And yeah, that's basically it. We're now working with a landscape document. Right, so I skipped ahead a little. I added in the colors we're gonna use for our dashboard. And now to save this as a color scheme that we have easily accessible at all times, let's head over here to the color schemes tab on the left, click create new color scheme, give it a name, and magic, it's automatically detected the colors on our page and generated our palette. So now let's just hit save and apply. And now you can see that we can easily access it here from the colors dropdown as we go on designing. Okay, so far so good. We've done the legwork, our document is now landscape and we have our color scheme set up. So let's now add a gradient background to the page. To do so, we're gonna hop up here to the graphics panel pop open photos, type in gradient, and select whichever gradient we feel is a good fit. Then let's scale it up to cover the entire page by dragging the handles while holding down shift. And with that done, let's hop up to the toolbar here above, align it to the center, and finally let's go ahead and lock it. Oh, and by the way, in terms of gradients, if you don't find what you're looking for here in the photos panel, you can always use one of the internet's many free gradient tools to create your very own gradient and then upload it to PixieChart. I personally like UI gradients, but again, there are plenty of options out there to choose from, so have a look around and decide for yourself. So to lay out our dashboard with much greater precision, I've created a grid consisting of 12 columns and nine rows. Now, I won't show you how I actually did this, but if you're interested in learning how to do so, let us know in the comments and we'll look into creating a tutorial about creating grids in PixieChart. So with that out of the way, let's get on with the actual design. Today's dashboard has six different data sets and we're going to place each inside its own separate block. So first, let's hop back up to the graphics panel, pop open shapes and icons, and how about we go for one of those trendy rounded rectangles that you see everywhere on the web today. And now that it's on the page, let's start by changing its color to white and then let's bump the opacity all the way down to something like 15% so that it's super smooth and subtle. And then let's drag the handles here to change the dimension so that it spans four columns and for the height, we're gonna go with three rows. Then let's drop in a subtitle and some descriptive body text and make sure that it's placed here in the top left corner of the rectangle. I've set the type in poppins at 15 points and the opacity is set to 60%. So at this point, we can simply copy this block along with the text and transform the size and dimensions of the rectangle any way we want. And we're simply going to repeat this process until we end up with a layout that supports our content. And so what we have right here looks pretty solid to me. So now let's just delete our grid. We don't really need it anymore. Up next, we'll tackle the stuff I guess you've been waiting for, the actual charts. All right guys, as promised, charts. To add charts in PixieChart, we're gonna scoot over to the Tools tab here on the left and click, well, Charts. In this newly revamped modal, we get a bunch of different charts to choose from, from more complex options like bubble charts and scatter plots, to creative swatch charts, and all the way down to basic options like a standard bar chart. Now we can import our data from a CSV or Excel file right here, or we can paste it straight into the chart editor, just like so. 
And both of these are of course perfectly valid options, but for something like a dashboard, it's likely that we're working with dynamic data. And whether that data changes daily, weekly, monthly, or something else, let's face it, it's a pain to have to go in and manually update our data every single time a change occurs. And that folks is where the third option comes in handy, dynamically linking our data from Google Sheets to Picture Chart. Right, so as you can see, I've fired up Google Sheets and in here we have all the data for today's dashboard. The data is split into different tabs and to link it up with Picture Chart, we're simply going to head up to the file menu, click publish to web, keep the settings as is and hit publish. So now let's close this pop-up and then we'll simply copy the URL, head back over to Picture Chart, click this tab that says dynamic data, paste in the URL, wait for it to link up and bada boom, bada bing. Whenever we update our Google Sheets over here, it will be reflected in our charts over here in Pixar Chart. And that is really all there is to it. In the next section, we're going to customize the look and feel of our charts, give them a nice little makeover. So stay tuned. So to customize and style our charts, we'll click this little cog icon. And doing so takes us into a separate editor where we get a bunch of different customization options. We can add chart and axis titles. We can of course change the color of our chart, just like so. We can toggle on and off things like legends, axes, grids. We can add data labels or simply stick to our cool interactive tooltips which display on hover. We can set minimum and maximum values for the y-axis, among other things. For now, let's uncheck the legend, make it a stacked chart, change the text color to white and hit insert chart. And with our first chart now on the page, let's resize it by dragging the bounding box handles and then let's reposition it. So to add our second chart, let's just copy this one chart, move it over here to the left and once again, we'll resize it. Then let's double click the chart to enter the editor. And just like before, we're gonna head back over to Google Sheets, find the relevant data tab, copy the URL and link it up with picture chart. And since we're displaying a trend over time, how about we choose a line area chart? And with that done, let's hop back into the customization panel and then let's simply get rid of the axis and grid. And then we're gonna hit insert chart. And since I'll be following more or less the exact same drill, let me just speed this up while I link up our Google Sheets data with Picture Chart and customize our remaining two charts. Now, I deliberately uncheck the legend option for our charts and the downside to this is obvious. It's a little more work. But the upside is that we get to have total control over the appearance and placement of our legends. So let's scoot over to the graphics panel, select shapes and icons. And from here we can go with whatever shape or icon we fancy. But for now, let's just go with a simple circle. Then let's scale it down and let's also change its color so that it matches up with our chart. And now we'll of course want to add a legend label adjacent to it. And so once it's looking the way we want, let's create a copy of it and simply change the color as well as the legend label. At this point, let's just place our legend wherever we want it to be. And so, yeah, as you can see, adding our own legends is a teeny bit cumbersome, but if you're a control freak like me, I'm sure you understand. Okay, so once again, I've skipped ahead a little. I've already dropped in our standout figure along with a year and year comparison. To complete this block, we're gonna add in a line and an upward arrow. So let's head up to the graphics panel, select lines, click it to add it to the page and move it over here. And then let's change the line type from dashed to solid. And let's also change its color so that it's consistent with the rest of our design. Finally, we're gonna scale it down and then we're gonna hold down shift while rotating it. And as for the arrow, let's select shapes and icons, type in arrow, and then we're gonna add in whichever we like. Let's change the color from the default black to white, and then let's scale it down and place it here adjacent to our percentage figure. And so at this point, let's simply drag our mouse over our elements to select them, and then let's create a copy of this selection, position it over here, and finally, let's change the numbers. And once we're done with that, let's also change the line color to make it consistent with the rest of our design. 
Now, I don't know about you, but this already looks pretty sexy to me. Still, I think we can make it just a little sexier. First, we're going to add a subtle world map to this geodata up here in the top right. So let's once again head over to the graphics panel, pop open shapes and icons, and let's just do a search for world. So let's add this map to the page, change its color to white, and once again, we're gonna bump down the opacity to something like 25%. Next, let's create a cool pulsating effect that we'll use to highlight important parts of our data. So let's add a circle to the page. We'll change its color to this yellow, create a copy of it and reduce its size slightly. Then let's create another copy and we'll reduce the size of this even, th even further. Sorry. So let's now select all of them, head up to the alignment panel and here we're going to center our three circles horizontally as well as vertically. And finally, we'll lower the opacity to around 60% and boom shakalaka, we've created this nice effect that we can use to direct the attention to where it truly matters. And so guys, as a very, very last thing, let's just drop in our title in the top left of the page. And yeah, we've created an awesome interactive dashboard that's linked up with Google Sheets. And you know what that means. It's time to share it with your boss, your clients, whoever needs a little shot of some data love. And so here's how you do it. Okay, so to share this dashboard, let's head up here to the share button on the top right, click it, and this launches a prompt asking us if we've named our project correctly. So let's just hit okay. And this takes us into the actual share mode where we get our link along with a number of different options. Now by default, the dashboard is not publicly visible, but if we toggle this slider, we can password protect our creation. And what's even better, we can fetch a responsive embed code and place it directly on our own or our clients' domains. And so there you have it, a relatively simple way to turn your dry numbers into a beautiful interactive dashboard that's made to impress. If you wanna try this out for yourself, we've included a link in the description along with the color hex codes. It's totally free, so yeah, give it a try and let us know how it goes. I hope you found this tutorial useful and if you have, it would make a day if you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more nifty design tips. As always, thank you so much for watching and happy picture charting.